Hi writers, today we have an important lesson on the building block of a paper, which is a paragraph. We have this key page from the Purdue Alwa website on paragraphs, and I'm going to engage us in the mindset you want to have when you're paragraphing in your college writing. The Purdue OWL with this webpage covers things as a definition on a paragraph. It also has a basic rule for paragraphing, which is keep one idea per paragraph. It further breaks down the elements of a paragraph as unity and coherence, a topic sentence, adequate development, and so on. Notably, when we consider unity and coherence, we're talking about one, the paragraph is on one idea, two, coherent means your sentences lead perfectly into the next. An example violation of that would be something like, I sat on the bench waiting for the bus to arrive. I like tacos. <laughs> bench, waiting for a bus, tacos. That first sentence didn't lead into the next, so that's an example of two sentences that we can say are not coherent. To engage us in this lesson on paragraphs, what I'm going to do here today, like I like what I like I do with my writers, is I draw a thought bubble, as I encourage my writers to do. You can do one as well if you want, and then let's just kind of simplify what is the what are the fundamental ideas, thoughts that you want to have when you're paragraphing? We already have one example here, which is, and if you're thinking of this as <laughs> thoughts, you would say, keep one idea per paragraph. Keep one idea per paragraph. And then the Purdue will also talks about different types of paragraphs. We had a lesson earlier, if you want to look back in a prior video that I did on invention. These are your paragraph options. So yes, you're aware I need to keep one idea per paragraph, but you also want to select from different types of paragraphs. So my mindset here is I know I can use a paragraph that compares, that's one of your paragraph types, compares, defines, describes, narrates, which is you can tell a story. If you can't say it in first person, then just say, say your name, John. John thinks this. Or John had this experience. Of, a story needs three things, situation, conflict, resolution. The situation involves you, other people. You don't have to say I, you can say instead, John began the day doing this, this, and this. Of course, your name then is John, right? So that's the idea behind narrating in third person. I commonly hear my writers kind of <laughs> are fronted with the challenge of how can I write a story if it's not in first person? Well, there you have an easy example. So I know I can use a paragraph that compares, defines, describes, narrates, explains consequences or explains causes, explains processes, the steps that are involved in something, explains processes, Cla or did I have classify? I don't. Classifies, put something in a specific category. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and argues. Each one of these paragraph options, you want to use one per paragraph. In other words, you only want to accomplish one purpose per paragraph. So that would look like this is your thought process. I want to accomplish one purpose with, my, with each paragraph. I want to accomplish one purpose with each paragraph. I want to compare in this paragraph. I want to define in this paragraph. I want to tell a story in this paragraph. But you only want to accomplish one purpose per paragraph. Another thing you want to keep in mind with paragraphs is verb tense. Try to stick to one tense per paragraph. There are 12 verb tenses, believe it or not. 12 verb tenses. Commonly, we want to stick to past, present, or future. 
I will stick to one verb tense per paragraph. All right, let me take a look at the web page here for further information on how and what we need to consider when we're writing a good paragraph. Oh, I should use transitions on occasion. Transitions are words like similarly, first, second, third. So I should use transitions on occasion. You don't want to use transitions for every sentence. It's going to sound too robotic and predictable. There's an art, there's an artistry to how we should organize our paragraphs. There's an artistry to how we should express and clarify our ideas using words. And you don't want to kind of sound like a robot. So I should use transitions on occasion. What else for considering here? Oh, uh, it talks about length. So here's one that's interesting for a target length on the Purdue Owl. It talks about adequate development. The topic, which is introduced by the topic sentence, should be discussed fully and adequately. But writers should be wary of paragraphs that only have two or three sentences. I usually try to have at least ten sentences. So I should have, try to have ten sentences. Here's a good one. I'm not going to call my paragraph finished until I've used, for example, at least once. There's a good thought to have. I will not call my paragraph complete until I've used, for example, at least once. Here's another important one. Often as writers, we think, oh, I know this word is misspelled, let me type it, I'll come back and edit it, edit it later on. Or I know I need a comma here, but let's just get to the end and I'll come back and edit it later on. You can forget things, for are human, and then you have that proofreading error. Edit as you go, the mindset here is, I want to edit as I go. Get that word exact right away. Don't miss that comma when you know that you probably need it. I want to edit as I go. I want to write with a dictionary. The dictionary is a friend. Constantly look up words so that you don't get them incorrect. I will write with a dictionary. I will write with my dictionary. Now, of course, I'm talking about looking up words as you go. Don't necessarily need a hard copy dictionary. All right, everyone. That is an example of how and what you should consider when you are writing good paragraphs in academic writing.